So I recommend to you having a quick read about this guy here, Fritz Haber. This guy had a crazy, crazy life. Uh, he actually worked out how to make ammonia cheaper and easier. Well, ammonia was toilet cleaner, who cares? But you can use it also to make explosives and fertilizers. If you increase the concentration of nitrogen or increase the concentration of hydrogen, the equilibrium is going to shift to the right and you're going to make more product. You're going to make more ammonia, which is the whole point of the harbour process. If you remove ammonia, it will also shift to the right and make more ammonia. Well, you should remove it. You're flogging it, aren't you? You're selling it off. So these things come straight out of Le Chatelier's principle. But uh, Fritz Haber worked on some extra stuff. A powdered iron is a catalyst. It increases the rate of the forwards and reverse reaction equally. So it reduces the time for equilibrium uh, to occur so you can start making money. Let's look at the effect of pressure. Well, if you increase the pressure, the effects on kinetics and equilibrium is what this assessment statement's about. So if you increase the pressure, the effect on the kinetics, you know, the rate of reaction stuff, that's good. Uh, there are more collisions per unit time, and so the reaction's going to go faster. Good. But if you increase the pressure on the equilibrium, it's going to shift to the side with the least gas particles. Oh, that's good too. Four reactants, two products. So pressure increase, that's all great for the harbour process. So they, choose, uh, they chose 250 atmospheres as the optimum. Now, that is a medium pressure. They can make much higher pressure if they wanted. But you know what? They got a good yield for that. And it's not too dangerous. You didn't have to spend a lot of money on high uh, quality reaction vessels that wouldn't explode with these super duper high pressures. A medium pressure, that was fine. So economics uh, play a role in that. The effect of temperature. Well, if I have a high temperature, that's great for the kinetics. Uh, more collisions per unit time and higher energy per collision, my reaction's going to go faster. But for equilibrium, it's going to shift to the left-hand side, the endothermic side. Uh, and I'm going to start to lose my percentage of ammonia in the equilibrium. Mm. Low temperature, well, my reaction's going to go really slowly. But at equilibrium, I'm going to have a lot of ammonia because low temperature favours the right-hand side, which is the exothermic side. Delta H is negative for the forward reaction. So what temperature is chosen? Well, you know what? You need a medium temperature. Not too hot, not too cold, Goldilocks. 450 degrees C, you actually have to remember that temperature. That's a compromise between those problems. Uh, and once again, economic factors are coming into play. So this is the second equilibrium you have to learn. This is the contact process, make sulfur trioxide, which you can add to water to make sulfuric acid. I used to teach that Mr. Contact was the guy that invented this, and thousands of people believe that now in the world. No, no, some things contact each other in there. That's all that means. Le Chatelier's principle says that if uh, you stress an equilibrium, it moves to oppose the stress. So if you add reactants, it will shift to the uh, product side and increase the amount of products. And if you remove the products, the equilibrium will shift and replace those products. Thank you, Mr. Le Chatelier. The catalyst is vanadium 5 oxide, which you should know already. Speeds up the forward and backwards reactions equally and reduces the time needed to reach equilibrium. And then you can start selling it. Let's look at the effect of temperature. And once again, we have to uh, examine the kinetics, the rate of reaction, and the equilibrium business. If I increase the temperature, uh, then the rate of reaction is going to go up for two reasons. Uh, more collisions per unit time and higher energy collisions. But the equilibrium is going to shift to the endothermic side and I'm going to make less sulfur trioxide. So I'm only going to have a little bit of sulfur trioxide made really fast. If I lower the temperature, uh, that's going to mess up the speed of the reaction, but I am going to make a lot of sulfur trioxide because the equilibrium is going to shift to the exothermic side, which is the products. You see that delta H is minus? So once again, we're going to need a, a compromise temperature, a Goldilocks temperature, if you will. And it's the same as the harbour process, 450 degrees C. Not too hot, not too cold. Uh, thank you, Mr. Harbour and Mr. Contact. 
Now, the last bit is a little trick that I'd be like to ask this because it's like a stinger question, the, the last point in a 25-point question that is unlikely to be got right. It's only two atmospheres are used in the contact process, and that is low for an industrial process, and that favours the reactants, the side with the most gas particles. It shifts to increase the pressure because it's a low-pressure reaction. Well, how does that make any sense from what we just learned? Well, you know what? This still gives a great yield with the catalyst and the temperature that's chosen. The pressure isn't as important as you think. So there's no need to spend money on expensive uh, pressure resistant vessels or compressors or insurance. You can just use a low pressure, which is safer as well. And we're done.